What's up guys, we're going to be looking at this lab, blind SQL injection with time delays. As a starting point in the hint section here, we can see you can find some useful payloads on our SQL injection cheat sheet. We take a look at the cheat sheet. There's two important pieces of information. The first is string concatenation. This simply means joining strings together. The syntax is a little bit different depending on the flavor of SQL. In this case, let's just take it as a given that it is PostgreSQL that's running on the back end. And we can see that the concatenation operator in PostgreSQL is two pipe characters. The second useful piece of information from the cheat sheet is how to get the database to sleep or to wait. We can see in PostgreSQL, the important function is PG underscore sleep. It takes an argument. That's the time in seconds that the database is going to sleep for. Basically, the database is going to pause and not do anything for that period of time. We can see that in other databases, it's also called sleep. The function in MySQL is sleep with the argument passed in parentheses. Microsoft, we can see wait for delay and we can specify a time. And also we can see Oracle has its own syntax as well. The objective of the lab here is simply to get the database to sleep for 10 seconds. We're also given some other information regarding the vulnerability here. The application uses a tracking cookie for analytics and performs a SQL query containing the value of the submitted cookie. OK, that's plenty of information. Let's fire up the lab. So we're on the main page of the lab, if we refresh the lab, it means we'll be assigned a tracking ID cookie. And we can see a subsequent request here in the burp suite repeater containing the tracking ID that we are sending back to the server. So if we take a look in the request cookie section over on the right hand side, we see the tracking ID value. Let's change that to X. Let's use a single quote. And we're imagining, and it's good to visualize this, by the way, that something similar to the following is being run on the SQL database. This is speculation. We don't know the precise query that's being run, but we are very likely selecting from a type of sessions table. Select all from sessions table where tracking ID equals X. Now, normally this trailing single quote is going to be provided by the code itself that's running on the back end, but providing our own single quote and then potentially commenting out the single quote that's being provided by the back end code itself, we're able to inject further into this query. And the logical thing to do is to concatenate to this result. We know in PostgreSQL, it's a double pipe character. Then we can call the PG sleep function for 10 seconds. And you might wonder, why is it that we are concatenating? What does that do? Well, the idea is that in order for PG sleep to be evaluated and concatenated as part of the string, first of all, the PG sleep function has to be called. We can't simply call PG sleep because we are in the middle of a query, but by concatenating it to the existing query, we're able to cause the SQL database to execute PG sleep in an attempt to find its string value. So let's work on our query. We know we need the double pipe character for concatenate operator in PostgreSQL, PG underscore sleep, 10 seconds, comment character to get rid of that trailing single quote. If we click apply changes, we can see the URL encoded version of that payload. And let's send that to the back end. Now, what we should see is that we don't get a response. Why not? The database is sleeping. We should actually get a response in round about 10 seconds from the time we send that request to the back end. So it's fairly obvious that we were able to get the database to sleep. When we head back to the lab itself, we get the flag. Congratulations, you solved the lab. Now, although this is a vulnerability in itself, it's not really intended behavior. Usually this type of vulnerability is going to be used in conjunction with a further aspect to the attack where we can retrieve data from the database. This initial lab was simply to introduce us to the concept of a time delay caused by the underlying SQL database. In the upcoming lab from Portswigger, we'll be taking a look at how we can use time delays to extract information from the underlying database. Okay, hope this was helpful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next lab.